Okay. We should go back to whatever vamp we start at the top. Okay. You know, ba da ba do be a da ba bong gum ka dum 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 dum. On the day we recorded this album, Juan and I had been friends for 21 years and 11 days. We met in 1993 as sophomores transferring to Douglas Anderson School of the Arts in Jacksonville, Florida. I first noticed Juan's saxophone case on the bus ride to school. Then we bumped into each other in homeroom, and finally, we met in first jazz band later that day. It was a case of, okay, you're new, I'm new, we're both serious about the same thing, let's be friends. That kicked off three years of carpool listening sessions and weekend jams in Juan's living room. We'd play along to Abersold CDs while Juan's parents watched from the couch. We discovered 251s together, attended our first jam sessions together, made all-state jazz band together. Anxious to begin our recording careers, we even booked studio time and hired the best band we could afford. It was a proud day. We made our first tape. We went our separate ways for college, and while we always stayed in touch, we saw less and less of each other each year. Somehow 15 years went by without playing together. Until this January, when Juan visited me in Los Angeles. We pulled out the old play-alongs and jammed like it was 20 years ago. It was as if no time had passed. We still could finish each other's ideas and sync up like we played together consistently. I knew we should document this for real. So I lured Juan back for another visit, booked a studio in Hollywood, and recruited two of my favorite players in town. The plan was to just go in with little structure and record some of the tunes we used to play. But I had an agenda. I wanted to capture conversation, not competition. There's a rich legacy in jazz of two tenor recordings. One kind is the cutting contest, where the material tends to be fast and challenging and each player tries to outdo the other. I was more interested in the two men talking kind. My model was Coleman Hawkins encounters Ben Webster. Using that old Hollywood sound as a reference, we all set up in one room so we could see and hear each other. One reason new jazz recordings don't sound like old ones is that modern studios isolate players to allow for editing later. But if you're not gonna edit, why isolate? I wanted that sound you only get when each player's instrument bleeds onto all the microphones. I wanted that big room reverb. I also wanted to capture what came instinctively. So we stuck to first takes and no overdubs. Right would be what happened on the first pass. And the material, well, what can I say? Juan and I share an affinity for a broad range of music. The standards were a perfect vehicle to transport us back to familiar territory. But of course, I ended up writing a few tunes just days before the session and even arranging one of my favorite police songs. We recorded all of it in one day, but the end result was two unique statements. So in the spirit of an old album, I grouped them as side A and side B. I think you'll understand why when you listen. us, all this music exists in the same space. It's all approached with the same diligence and enthusiasm for creating in the moment. From the swing tunes to the sting tune, one thing was obvious. This feels familiar, like we've been here before. Mm-hmm. 